Good to see you back. We're going to continue now our discussions of applications of nuclear science, radioactivity. And this time we'll focus more on biological systems and biomedicine. And we'll begin by discussing one application called PET scans. A biological application of radioisotopes for diagnosis. What are called PET scans, positron emission tomography. Perhaps somebody in your family that you know of has, uh, has had a PET scan. A PET scan works in the following way. Uh, glucose, which is a component of, of sugar, uh, is labeled or tagged with a particular isotope of fluorine, fluorine 18. Well, fluorine 18 is what is called a positron emitter. It emits positrons. It turns out that our brains metabolize glucose as the preferred energy source. If you give a patient a fluorine 18 labeled uh, glucose, this will go to the brain and then the positron emission can be measured, thus giving us a scan of the brain and the active regions that are metabolizing that glucose. Okay, let's, let's now talk about some health risk of exposure to radiation. Alpha, beta, and gamma radiation can damage molecules by essentially kicking out electrons and breaking covalent bonds, thus resulting in the damaging of the molecule. Well, in some cases, we can resynthesize damaged molecules in our body, but not always, and especially with DNA, if DNA is damaged, and if the information content of our DNA is damaged, then, then we can have problems repairing that. Now, we do have some repair mechanisms for DNA, but they can be overwhelmed by the damage from uh, radiation. So alpha, beta, and gamma radiation are called ionizing radiation. Second line says that if this happens to biomolecules, especially DNA, this can cause malfunctions of the cell or death of the cells. Now, with respect to exposure to radiation, we can talk about acute exposure. That is, if you are exposed to radiation as a result of something like a nuclear blast, heaven forbid, or exposure to a reactor core, this can result in the immediate death of a large number of cells leading to the death of the human or the animal. Or the plant. But you can also have chronic exposure, that is day-to-day -day exposure, multiple exposures over a period of time. And these accumulate and they can lead to a weakened immune system, uh, a reduced ability to absorb nutrients from our food, damage to our DNA which can result in either mutations of that animal or birth defects of offsprings or sterilization the level of exposure to radiation is measured in terms of something called a REM, R-E-M, a Röntgen equivalent in man. And in the next slide, I'm going to show you the REM values for the exposure to various kinds of radiation. So in this table, I have the exposure source on the left, and then I have the dose in REMs. Now, I'll tell you that quite often you'll see these as millirems, and that's, that's moving the decimal place three positions, but I'm going to give these all in rems. The first two rows show background exposure, 0 .090 rems per year. That's from just such things as the, as the buildings around us, the earth around us, and the food we eat, and the radiation from, from, the, from the sun at sea level. These are levels of exposure that we simply cannot minimize, so 0 .090 rems. Also, we can be exposed to radiation through radon gas, which seeps through the ground. And 0 .20 rems per year is an average exposure to radon gas. So these first two are sort of like the background that we can't escape. Uh, you may know that if you're, if you're building a house, you, you will sometimes have to have a radon test performed because if you were to attempt to build a house on land that has too high a level, then you may not be able to, to get a permit to build there. Taking a jet airplane ride leads to additional exposure of 0 .0025 rims per trip. X-rays, chest X-rays, dental X-rays uh, add to our exposure. A barium enema will add a large amount and 
I, I just hate to even think about a barium enema. A thallium heart scan produces uh, 0.5 rems per year, and even your luminous watch produces just a little bit of exposure to radiation, but as you can see, it's very, very small. So these are listings for various types of exposure to radiation. An average uh, person in the United States is exposed to 0.3 to 0.4 rems per year. That's 300 to 400 millirems per year. Now, the Environmental Protection Agency and the National Regulatory Commission in OSHA uh, have set limits for exposure to radiation, and uh, oftentimes this is with respect to people who work with uh, radiation sources, to say that the maximum you should be exposed to per year is five rems. Five rems. But you can see from this table that unless you're getting a lot of thallium heart scans or barium enemas, you're pretty safe because you won't add up to five rems unless you're actually working with radiation. But there's one type of exposure to radiation that is so much larger than all of these other common exposures that I want to show it to you, and that's smoking cigarettes. A pack-a-day smoker is exposed to 16 rems per year. That is three times the maximum amount that OSHA and the Environmental Protection Agency and the Nuclear Regulatory Commission set as the maximum you should be exposed to. Now, why are we concerned about these maximum exposure rates? Well, if you look at the bottom part of my table, I show health consequences and dosage. If someone is exposed to 20 to 100 rims per year or in an acute exposure, this can lead to decreased white cells and a risk for cancer. So you can see why the smoker is, is at risk for cancer. Uh, at higher exposures, you can have radiation sickness or serious cancer risk of 100 to 400 uh, rems per year. If a person is exposed to over 500 rems, either as an acute exposure or per year, for example, if someone that just happens to be working in a radiation laboratory and not taking precautions and not monitoring their exposure, uh, a dosage of over 400 rems per year leads to death in about two months. And a person exposed to greater than 2,000 rems will die almost immediately within hours. So these are the consequences of exposure to radiation. And there is a website that you might want to visit to sort of calculate your own personal uh, exposure level. I did mine, and mine is uh, 0.303 rems or 303 millirems. So I'm sort of uh, at the average or low average and I guess maybe I need to not wear my my wristwatch or not have um, dental x-rays and things of that sort. Just joking of course. Now I want to I want to sh share with you when I was preparing this slide and thinking about acute exposure to such high levels of radiation my mind went back to a movie clip and you know you have to realize that I grew up in the uh, in in the 60s when uh, when uh, Star Trek was on first on television and and uh, Mr. Spock the science officer for the Starship Enterprise was was of course a person that uh, that I greatly re admired because of his stoic and, and logical nature and Star Trek fans have voted the number one scene in all of the movies and TV shows of Star Trek to be the death scene for Mr. Spock, which I'm going to show you now. Spock! No! Go the whole compartment to die. Sir, he's dead already. Spock! Don't breathe. <clears throat> 
is logical. The needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few or the one. I have been and always shall be your friend. Live long and prosper. Not a, not a dry eye in movie theater after that scene. As you can see, Mr. Spock suffered acute exposure to a radiation source and, of course, he died almost immediately. But come back for the next movie because he, he came back to life. All right. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll pause now for a quiz. And I have one last lesson for you to view, and that is on radiometric dating how we use radioactivity to determine the dates of various materials and then we'll move on to another chapter